Let's draw something. <laughs> so I got a pencil, eraser, sketchbook, and some references. So I was laying in bed looking at Pinterest and I went on a spree of collecting some like fun city poses. I tend to draw people standing there with one hand on the hip and I just went through a rabbit hole collecting a bunch of like sitting on their butts scrunched up like a pretzel poses because that's how I tend to sit. So why not draw some of those too, you know? Not sure which ones to start with. I think this is the one that started it all. It's just a product photo, but sometimes those are the most inspirational. I'll have a link in the description to all the poses that I use or the Pinterest board thing, whatever it's called. I also have my markers handy if need be, but let's just start sketching. I might actually start with my wider lead. It's a 1.3 millimeter and then this is a 0.5. So there's a big difference there. Anyway, what really drew me to this pose is just the way she's sitting on her feet, but the feet are kind of like curved inwards. And that's not something I would think of. If I was drawing this pose, it would probably end up being straight to the side, like more like this, you know, from the profile angle, because my brain doesn't really think in three quarter as much as I would like it to. So this is gonna be a good pose to jump into. Just find the shapes first. There's a hand up here. And around that's why knees are coming up like this. And I kind of like that this one's a bit looser. Some of the poses that I was finding were like, <laughs> they looked very mechanical and I didn't really like those. So I tried to collect poses that I thought kind of captured a more relaxed vibe, which might be more difficult to draw, we'll see. I think the mechanical vibe can come pretty naturally when you're drawing something new. Wait a minute. I'm not scrunched up enough. She's leaning on this leg. Whereas mine, if I drew the arm down this way and then back up, it's not gonna work because her arm's coming more to the left and then up. So I need to move this top half down at least that much. So let's take this sack of burr flower here and bend it over more. I'm glad I have a reference for this because this is already <laughs> starting so well. Now I feel like it's a little too scrunched. Maybe this butt needs to come out further. This knee should end sooner. Come on, it's a cute pose. I want to draw it. <laughs> you. Something we gotta chisel away at. Sometimes I forget that the first stage of art is ugly. <laughs> God, there's not enough room to draw her shirt. I guess I need to elongate the torso. Maybe it's the legs that are just in the wrong spot. So they need to come up to be at that same spot, but they need to come out from lower. Really the feet come down this way. I really wanna draw these converse. <laughs> I hope we get to that point. I think this is already shaping up a little better. That's just something you gotta work at. One thing I definitely got wrong is the boob is under the arm here. The boob is behind the arm here. Do I actually want to change that? Because I'm feeling good vibes from this. Although we might just find the bad vibes later. And I want to try and capture the feet that are doing that like turning towards each other thing. It's a little tricky just because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Nothing more to it really. Still not like horizontal. So this arm's almost going vertical, but I think I'm just gonna have to go with the flow for the rest of it, because otherwise it's kind of just restarting. But we'll just see where we can get with this. I really like the way this denim scrunches right there. Don't know why I'm going into the details. <laughs> Ooh, this hand looks fun. Like this fun, pinky, whatever this finger's called. Yeah. I started, I actually pulled the arm a little up. I'm gonna add a little depth to find the distance in relationship to each other. And I can't really quite see the hand. It looks like it's just sort of like this. Okay, I think it's time to go in and do the shoes. I think I'm just a little off here on some lines. So let me just figure out the outside. And then I should be able to add the fun detail bits. Hmm? Hmm. I kind of had to remove the tangent here. It just didn't quite work well, just for sketching purposes. Unless I can bring this leg up a little. Does that scrunch it too much? It's not the same relationship as the reference, but I am not displeased. Into the shoes, shall we? I'm gonna start with this shoe right here because this just seems like an easier angle to practice. Oh, I love the way the lace is tied. Let's see if we can do this justice. Basically, it looks like it ends around here, down to where it scrunches. And there's the tongue of the shoe. It's kind of coming out sideways. Face of the shoe. Somehow this became a shoe video. 
See the difference between starting out with a thicker pencil and then going in with something thinner and finding the details? It works well for me because it kind of harkens back to the way I do digital art. I used to always start with a really wide brush or draw really small and then enlarge in the drawing and then keep like the same sized brush. And then when I went over it, it was obviously much smaller. So it kind of reminds me of that. And it works well for me. I have to cut down on the number of ringlets. Is that they're called? Hmm. I literally was looking for a machine that did this, so I should know what they're called. <laughs> a bunch of wrinkles here. How's that looking? Does it look like a Converse? Now, she ain't wearing any socks, but I don't know if you've ever worn canvas shoes like this without socks, but I don't like it. So, <laughs> just gonna throw a little, little ankle sock in there. Something simple. Now the other shoe. Now the way I have it drawn right now, it doesn't quite look like they're pointing in towards each other. So with this one, I think I'm gonna need to pull the laces inwards a little bit more. The laces come here. Oh shoot, they're touching. They are not touching in the reference, but they're touching here. Hmm, doesn't look good enough like the reference. I think the biggest issue is that they're just so much closer together, but I did change up the pose a bit, so I guess that's to be expected. Seems... Oh, you actually see the butt pockets in this reference. Eh, I wouldn't have thought that. I actually kind of like this outfit. Very simple. Basic. Hmm, now do I want to add some my hair? I guess we could do something. Start with this brush, though. Kind of just go with the same way I did that curly hair. Break it up into shapes. Try and simplify it. I like this. Erase the lines we don't need. Ah! Come back. <laughs> I'm actually kind of happy with this. That's not bad. Quit, please. Quit, please. All right, here we have the first one. It's a little mushy right here. So let me just go in with the thinner pencil. Try to refine that. Because like I mentioned in that hair video, I get a little sloppy with the hair. And that was the whole point in that one. Just try and gain some confidence when trying to find the details in hair. Well, not leaving it super messy all the time. Like obviously hair has a certain messiness quality, but there's also messy and lazy. And mine were on the lazy messy side. There we go. Well, it already looks better. I guess it just comes down to not giving up too soon. Favorite parts of the shoes. <laughs> Let's do another one. Oh yeah, this one. I think this is another product photo. <laughs> I didn't really leave space here, but we'll do our best. Tricks of an artist, eh? Okay, so I guess we'll try and draw this one a little smaller. Now we can't quite see some of the body parts here, so we're gonna have to just try and uh, grasp some of that knowledge that I already have tucked deep, deep, deep in the brain. I need to fit it in this size. Kind of curves like this and the body kind of twists. I remember back in the day trying to draw poses of like cross-legged and this area was always very confusing. This arm, like this. Uh, <laughs> what is even happening? Is this Photoshop? This doesn't make sense. Or maybe it's just an interesting lens. Like the bottom of the shoe, tongue of the shoe. It just bends really weird. <laughs> this is not making the most sense. This is why we draw these poses, I guess. Something that I really found interesting was the way the shirt curls up like that, but then the pants kind of curls down. I think that's something I needed to learn. Excited about that little piece of knowledge. Like <laughs> so this foot lines up with her left shoulder, whereas mine's right in the center. Maybe that'll solve some issues. But then that makes this leg, arm, leg, yeah, leg, so long. Are we sure about this? <laughs> Vichy just has really long legs and that's not something that I see on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't have very long legs, so this is confusing to me. If anything, hopefully my knowledge of denim jeans will improve, especially this side zipper thing. Not side zipper, what is it called? Inseam? I'm just gonna put her in like a similar outfit to this one, I guess with different shoes though. These are just really big shoes. Maybe that's what's throwing me off. This pose is coming off a little robot-y. I'm like, mm, 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 mm. perfect, hard, right angles. I can't see this one because there's a hand right here. Here with a thumb. Break it down to just two squares. That'll simplify it. And I totally forgot about this arm, so we can throw that in here too. Her elbow is like almost right on the knee, but I just don't want 
that weird edge. I guess we'll just keep it where it is. Take some liberties. Maybe this pose needs to be curled downwards. Ooh, wait, that is making more sense. Now that's something I can't really see because the clothes are kind of baggy, but this body part is kind of leaning forward. That makes a huge difference. I'm just like looking back and forth, back and forth. Again, no socks in the shoes. People must have the driest feet on the planet because I don't think I can get away with that. I tried to pick poses that had somewhat of a silhouette because some of these poses, it's just like, oh, I'm scrunched up here. Oh, look at me. I'm all a Play-Doh. <laughs> Whereas ones that have some distinct silhouette and spaces between the body parts are a little easier. Except in this region, this is all one mush and that's where I'm having the issue. I think if I could see behind this denim jacket and see where these lines come out, I think that would be helpful. I wonder if I just need to like cut into that more. Give her a cute little outfit then. I don't really feel like drawing the denim jacket. Maybe like rolled up sleeves inspired by the rolled up denim jacket. Maybe we'll tie it into a little like front knot. Get a little looser on top. Get pulled into the knot. Something still iffy with the legs. It's just because one's like upwards and one isn't. Get the back shoe. I guess a piece of it would probably be showing here. This shoe. Actually kind of looks good the way it is. Something to the bottom. Call that a pretty scrunched up pose. Wouldn't mind drawing that one again, but just for sakes of uh, variety. Let's do another one. Look, other people have drawn it too. Hey, stop moving. How cool is that? <laughs> do I like this one? Anyway, stop looking. All right, back to the pose. This could probably fit into this. Head, shoulders, boot. I drew it too big. Foot. I wish you could see what this other hand is doing. It's like way behind me, like I'm dueling. <laughs> this may fit. I think I could bring this leg down a bit though. This has really baggy clothes, so it's gonna have that kind of similar problem. Not quite being able to see the body, which will make things confusing, but I suppose more challenging. Not in a good way, but like in an interesting way. <laughs> One arm's coming out from here, other arm's like here. It like comes into an elbow about there. This one comes out to an elbow about there. Curl it in. Hands are like here. Thing for this arm. Hand. Find the body in here. I think I do need to bring the butt up a little. Oh, this leg's actually coming inwards a little. Basically, I'm starting with a big block of clay. So I draw big cubes and squares. Which is especially helpful because this pose has such large clothing on it. And then from there, I'll hopefully be able to pin down more of the character from where certain body part landmarks are. So there we have a little keyhole. <laughs> because there's nothing here. Shadow, a bit of leg showing back here. Curls this way. Maybe a cylinder might help. And we have a big chunky shoe. This video has somehow become a lot about shoes. I think I'm gonna have to bring this shoe up a little if I want to draw the whole thing. Oh, and there's a backpack. I completely didn't see that. That's kind of fun just to add to the shape of the character. Something a little strange about this area. I think the arms ended up really long. That might be because of all the fabric on them. Let me try and draw the limbs without all the clothes. I think here in the pants region, there's a lot of hanging fabric, so I can kind of cut in on that. Socks. I like having areas where there's like a definitive line. So like if, if someone had their foot like this, the sock would be a straight line because the leg is curved and at an angle, we see how that straight line is distorted. So socks are super handy and like edges of fabric and stuff like that to kind of see what you're working with. Trying to figure out the shape of the shoe. You chisel away at the shapes. There's some areas where it's a little tight or loose, respectively. While I do feel like I need some practice drawing big ear clothes like this, I think just for the point of this exercise, I'm gonna try and draw similar outfits to those two. I really want to see if the body that I created makes sense. And I think by finalizing it with some tighter clothes might be the best way to do that for me. 
Try to keep some envelope. I'm gonna keep the uh, hair though, and the face and everything. <laughs> Zoom in there. And the nose goes here. And the lips. I wanna make her smile. Why is everyone so glum? Oops, I wasn't looking. <laughs> that nostril just kept sinking. All right, now the hair. Switch back to the larger pencil. Find the shapes. Basically the scalp, and then the hair kind of falls back behind there. Find the basic shapes of it. Round off the edges, make them more hair-like. Shade that all in, because she has dark hair. <laughs> no, if only the rest of the body was as done. And I said I was good. Should I do this? Hey, come here. Excuse me. Scoo -scoo -scoo. Keep a rolled up kind of look. We can keep this pretty loose and copy a lot of these wrinkles. And then we also have the backpack. Totally forgot about that. This sleeve looks too long. A little bit of trial and error here. Put a little tie here on the side so it doesn't like interact with too much and get distracting. Add a little tone. Separate those sections. What about pants? Oh, I didn't do the shoe either. <laughs> Ooh, there's a lot left. Cool. I saw something on Twitter a long time ago. Something about like there's two kinds of artists in the world. Those who draw super detailed <laughs> shoes and those who don't. Sounds like it's just the ones who have learned to draw shoes and the ones that are still learning. Because I don't think there's anyone who hates drawing shoes. I would be surprised. <laughs> this is fun. So we're gonna take her top and her pants, I guess. It's almost the same angle. You know what I should try next instead of using a reference is try to draw a pose sort of similar to these without a reference. See if I've learned anything. I never said anything about drawing super detailed backpacks. There we go. I'm really I like this one. You wouldn't think to draw something in that pose or in this weird shape and it would look like an arm, but it does. So I'm happy with that. <laughs> and that's why you use references. So now I'm gonna like just peruse the other ones that I had and not look too closely. And I'm gonna try and draw one all by my little lonesome. I hope it doesn't end up in that side profile like I mentioned earlier. <laughs> Start somewhere, curl up the body like a sack of potatoes. What about one of these poses? I want the legs to kind of curl in a little. Oh wow, this is so much less scary than it usually is. This is the most helpful line I think I learned through this whole thing, is that the top half kind of curves downwards and then the bottom half is gonna curl upwards a bit more. Because it's this middle section of the body, like if you're made up of two sections, if you were two squares, this is like the pelvis and this is the torso. If you bend over, this part's gonna curl like that, and then this part's gonna curl like this. So this middle section is what's getting scrunched up right here. Depending on how much they move, the more it's gonna get scrunched, and then you have more on one side and less on the other. So that's this middle section right here. I think I used to curl the top section upwards too, which would be necessary in certain circumstances, but not if the character is leaning towards the viewer. So that was worth all the money. Money? <laughs> The time I spent now, I can tell you that right now. My graphic design teacher would say that was worth the drive over. Anytime she'd say something interesting. This looks cute. I have been trying to draw in more poses like this. Practicing never hurts. Practicing is really up my alley right now. Give her some hair. Give it a side tie for the shirt. Do that same rolled up sleeve. Down here, let's do shorts. You just be butt down here showing. <laughs> We're doing the shorty shorts. This cuts in a little more, I think. Oh, I actually think I found some kind of extra grasp on this and I am very happy. This was a time well spent. Which shoes should we go with? Kind of want to do these. These shapes are important down here. This one is curled more towards the viewer. We're going to exaggerate some of these shapes. Getting there. Oh, and obviously we want some socks. Ah! I feel like I learned something. <laughs> Is that what that always feels like? Mm, let me just enjoy this moment. 
Ah, how nice. <laughs> I have drawn a pose on the first page, kind of similarly, and I remember how struggling a bit. You can see I was sort of grasping that lesson that this piece is curling down and that piece is curling up, but obviously this pose isn't quite as distorted as that. But now, now I feel like I really grasp it. Now should I add like a little color to this page to like spruce it up? I'm thinking about just adding like a wash of like watercolor behind them. Or should I like pick a pose and color it? Maybe I should pick the one that I did. Erase it and add like some markers or something. I just happen to have them handy. What a coinky dink. <laughs> What colors? I'm feeling greens and blues. Let's just grab two. Oh, and I guess this brown wants to come out. Potato brown, my baby. It's a fun color scheme. Actually, that's really similar to the character on the front, which I also tried to do. See, see how I've been trying to do the crunched up poses? I'm so glad I finally sat down and did some practicing. I guess the first step is to lightly erase our sketch so I can still sort of see it. Throw on some line art. Boom. <laughs> Line art. And then I just finish erasing the rest of the sketch. See if I missed anywhere that needs more line art. I think I changed my mind about the colors though. What do I do more blue? That's a pretty color. What does that look like with this? Hmm. What about like blue and pink? Okay, that's purple. I said pink. There you go. Do these two colors, like a cotton candy sort of vibe. If we're gonna do a two color color scheme, we wanna lean heavily on one of them so it's not equal parts of each or they start competing with each other. So let's do mostly pink with hints of blue. I was gonna do it the other way, but I literally just changed my mind right at this last second. Mostly pink, slightly blue. No turning back now. Pink canvas. What if we do like a raglan tee? A pink nose and a pink sweatband. Then for blue, I'm add a smidge, maybe blue hair. This is not at all what I pictured when I started, but here we are. Then we'll use a skin tone, something that complements the other colors I picked. Hopefully there'll be a little contrast there. That seems like the exact same tone as the rest. That's lighter. What about this? It's like purpley brown. This is called black brown. Have I never looked at the colors? Let me put it between these two colors. If I layer that with one of my, what was that color like? Peachy something? Rose beige. So then we get a slightly darker tone and that'll give us some contrast with the other two colors that we picked. See how it's kind of blending in with that pink? That's what layering it is gonna fix, hopefully. At least that's what my, uh, my little swatchies told me. Let's try that before we go onto the face. What if it's just for the shadow bits? Either way, we need the contrast, so it doesn't really matter. Probably go over this with like a, the pink color that we used before to add blush and like some variation to the skin tone. Pastel pink. Ooh, we can use that for shading. I think I would have done things a little differently. It's still like really saturated. I don't know if I want to like, maybe I just need a darker blue. Just bring some contrast in here. A little shading with this cool gray, specifically to the white area. Now if I have a white gel pen, I can draw on the laces. Might be on its end here. Needs more blue. Just a smidge. Cause I could have given her like a blue belt. There you go. Yeah. I think this color scheme ruined it. it wasn't the liner, it was the color. Kind of like it better with just the first tone. It's like saturated, whereas here it's all kind of dark. Maybe if I just make it all match though. Now her face is a little too light. Oh, that already looks better. I think it was just cause her face didn't match her body. Add some like strands of hair, flyaways and such. Oh, that looks good. A little shadow underneath the character. Add some blue details. I feel like I want to give her a tattoo because she has so much bare skin. 
although she looks pretty young. So we'll, we'll leave it. Anyway, I hope you had as much fun watching me draw as I did creating these sketches and practicing from references. Again, I'll have a link to all those references that I collected in the description below if you wanna try your hand at one of these or one of the other ones as well. I never drew her ear. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!